Hello, pre-K friends. I have a story today about Sonia de Lanay. Remember her? We had been studying all about her and we've been really sad that our great art artist study got interrupted and we haven't been able to finish our study yet. Um, we had this book we were saving to read with you at school, but since we can't be at school, let's read it together now. Sonia de Lanay, A Life of Color. We know how important color was to her. Charles was looking for his toy horse. He searched behind the chair, under the rug, and in every corner of his room. He reached in the back of his dresser's top drawer and found, tucked in among his socks and trousers, a blanket made of fabric patches of many different colors. That sounds familiar. Do you remember hearing about that? It looked familiar. It felt familiar. It even smelled familiar. But he could not remember why. Whose blanket is this? Charles, Charles asked his mother, Sonia. Sonia was an artist. So was Charles' father, Robert, and many of their friends. It's yours, Sonia replied. I made it when you were just born to keep you warm in your cradle. It reminded me of the patchwork blankets that people made in Ukraine, the place where I was born, far from our home in Paris. But your blanket is special. As I stitched together the little pieces of fabric, I could almost hear the colors singing. Charles pressed his ear to the blanket. Mama, you must have really good ears because I can't hear anything. Sonia thought for a minute. Your ears work just fine, but there are many different ways of listening. Your blanket changed the way I thought about colors, Sonia said. When I listen to them, they tell me what to create. What do they tell you, Mama? Sonia thought again. Why don't we let the colors speak for themselves? She took Charles by the hand. Come with me. The car roared as it zoomed through the streets of Paris. Charles shrieked with delight as they barreled along faster and faster. Suddenly the car lifted into the air. This would be no ordinary trip. Over the noise of the engine, he yelled, where are we going? Close your eyes, Sonia advised and follow the sounds of the colors. When Charles opened his eyes, he was surrounded bright by bright lights and music and people dancing. He couldn't help himself. He tapped his feet and clapped his hands. This is Le Bal Boulier, where your father and I dance the tango. I always wear a colorful dress and your father wears a grass green jacket, a sky blue waistcoat, and ruby red socks. Papa can sure dance. Try to feel the colors and the music together, Sonia encouraged. When I painted Le Bal Boulier, I tried to show everything, even things you might not think you can paint, such as the colors and sounds of movement. But I don't see Papa in you in the painting, said Charles. You don't need to see me, and you don't need to see Papa or any of the other people either. In the painting, the colors are dancing. But Mama, don't worry about understanding it now. Let's go where the colors take us. Eyes closed. The sun was so bright that Charles could barely open his eyes. He felt his skin grow hot. He squinted and saw a busy marketplace full of fruits and vegetables, and he heard people speaking words he didn't understand. Are we still in Paris, Mama? Not anymore. I've whisked you away to Portugal, to a town where your father and I lived when you were a baby. We love to visit this market. The foods here are different from those we have at home, and so is the way the sunlight looks and feels. Sonia picked up a tomato. It was red and round. Look at how the light changes the color of the tomato from one side to the other. Charles saw that one half was brightened by the sun and the other, in shadow, was a deeper, darker shade. When I made this painting, I tried to capture all of the light, shapes, and colors of this busy place. Charles looked hard. The shapes fit together like a puzzle. One of them even looks like a hat.
We have one last stop, Sonia said, as they blasted off in their colorful car. They zipped through the air. Charles felt the wind on his cheeks and watched the street lamps flicker in a city below. He saw bright colors in shop windows. He smelled bread from a bakery and he heard the whoosh of trains and other cars. All of his senses now swirled together. He was beginning to understand what his mother meant when she said she could hear colors and feel them. We just arrived in Amsterdam, Sonia said, at a store that sells the fabrics I design. You see, Charles, how we experience all of these lights and colors and shapes and sounds that surround us at the same time or simultaneously? I make designs for cars, furniture, and fabrics because besides being looked at, art can be driven, sat on, or worn. Art is all around us, always. Wow, we didn't know that, that Sonia de Lanay designed cars too? Can you imagine wearing a poem or an idea, Sonia asked. In a pile of clothes, Charles spotted a pair of silk pajamas printed with one of Sonia's bright, bold designs. I want to wear an idea, he said. Can I try them on? Charles pulled on the pajamas. The smooth, soft fabric slid over his skin. He felt weightless, as if he were floating. When he closed his eyes to think about all he had heard, seen, touched, and smelled, he imagined a rainbow of colors, singing, dancing. It's getting late, warned Sonia, and tomorrow is another day with even more to discover. But mama, I'm not sleepy yet. I have so many colors and sounds and ideas in my head. I'm glad that the world has color to cover it and keep it warm, Charles murmured dreamily, like a blanket. Now you know exactly what I mean, said Sonia. And she tucked him in and kissed him goodnight. The end. Well, that was an interesting story about Sonia de Lanay, huh? I wonder how much was true and how much was pretend in the story. I know a lot of what we read in this story was true. What an amazing artist Sonia de Lanay was and how important colors were to her. Hope you enjoyed listening. See you soon, friends. Bye-bye.